I bought my 2019 Yamaha YZ 450FX brand spanking new back on September 1st, 2018, three and a half years ago, and I did a custom street legal supermoto build on it as soon as I bought it, and I've ridden it 95% street and 5% off-road, and I have yet to do a single valve check or top-end rebuild on this bike, and I have absolutely ripped on this bike every time I ride it. I'm going to give you a review after three years of owning this bike and tell you the problems I've had, the pros and cons and whether this bike is any good or not but before I do that I'm going to give you a glimpse of what this bike can do in supermoto trim and how it has turned me into a hooligan <laughs> this thing is sick man I'm just going to crank the throttle that's it watch <laughs> see that I didn't do any clutch up guys that's pure torque Let's go for a ride. Subscribe today. But I'm gonna tell you this guys, before you get out here ride, make sure you're wearing all the gear. And if you want to get my gear, which is awesome, like this ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet, which is my favorite helmet with the auto tint shield, this Motovlog camera airbag vest to help keep you safe, which I never leave home without. All of my gear, I include links in the description and comment section of my video. A popular question I always get asked is why didn't I convert a WR450F instead of the YZ450FX? Well, the WR has all the emissions crap on it to make it a green sticker bike. So you have to mod this bike to get the full power out of it. So that means more money when the WR and the YZ cost about the same amount of money. So it makes no sense to get the WR version and have to do more work and spend more money. Also, the WR has a softer suspension setup for woods riding as where the YZ450FX has a stiffer suspension for cross-country racing, which is better for street riding. And then there are some of you that ask me why I didn't go with a YZ450F motocross bike because you falsely believe that it has more power than the FX version. Actually, my FX version has the same horsepower and torque as the motocross version. The only difference between the two bikes is that mine has a five speed wide ratio transmission which is excellent for the streets better than the close ratio transmission that's on the motocross bike and also it has a kickstand and a few other minor differences but the main reason why I went with the FX is because of the five speed wide ratio gearbox and of course I always get asked why I didn't buy a KTM 690 SMCR supermoto that's a bit more powerful and requires a whole lot less maintenance the number one reason why is because the 690 weighs 80 pounds more than my YZ 450 FX supermoto and also Parts are a lot more expensive and harder to come by. KTM dealerships are far and few in between as where Yamaha dealerships are everywhere. But hey, maybe I'll add one to the collection in the future. And why I didn't buy the Suzuki DRZ 400 Supermoto? Slower, heavier, and it has a carburetor. But hey, it's a classic cool Supermoto. Okay, enough about the other bikes. Let's talk about my YZ450FX, why I chose it, and also I'm going to tell you the pros with this bike that I experienced over the last three years of owning this bike. First off, the reason why I chose this bike, because in Ohio, I can plate anything, even a two-stroke, so I decided to get the dirt bike that was already best set up for the street, pretty much, besides doing a street legal conversion. With the YZ450FX, the engine is a pure race engine. I don't have to do any modifications to it. Straight power, just like the motocross bike. It's got 53.24 horsepower, 32.59 pounds-feet of torque, which this was done on the dyno by Dirt Rider back in 2019. Also, it has a 5-speed wide ratio gearbox, which is great for the street. It has a excellent KYB suspension that's stiff and perfectly set up for the street right out of the box. 
Also, it has a rubber mounted handlebar mounts, which absorbs any vibration. There's no vibration in the bars whatsoever with this bike and really not much at all in the pegs, which a lot of dirt bikes, when you convert them to street legal, you'll get a ton of vibration in the bars and pegs, which can make for an uncomfortable ride. Not with this bike. Also, it has the power tuner module on this bike that connects via Wi-Fi to the Yamaha Power Tuner app where you can make custom engine maps for this bike right on your smartphone, which I never done because it has two awesome maps on the switch on that handlebar already. One full balls to the wall power and the second map which subdues the power and actually kind of makes this a 250 which is awesome to take in the woods. So that's another reason this 450 actually can turn into a 250 by making a custom engine map or using the, uh, the lower power map that comes with the bike. Also, this bike is pretty lightweight at 254 pounds wet in dirt form. In supermoto form, I weighed in at 265 pounds, which is really lightweight for any supermoto. Also, it has a bilateral aluminum frame, which is really awesome. It looks awesome. Uh, it has a center fuel tank for mass centralization. I'll tell you, this bike feels actually a lot lighter weight than 265 pounds because of that center fuel tank. It has great strong brakes with good bite. It has strong bottom end torque and power through the rev range. I'm telling you, this bike rips, man. It's got tractor-like torque. Like you saw, I don't even have to do clutch up willies with this, guys. In second gear, I can just rip the throttle and this thing will pull a willy. By the way, the gearing that I have on this bike, I have the stock 13 tooth counter sprocket up front. And in the back, the rear sprocket is 44 teeth. And I'll tell you, that is the perfect gear ratio for the streets. It's I can ride this on the highway. It's not whining and screaming. It's perfect. And it still has a ton of bottom end power. I can ride it off road. And I clocked the top speed on the highway at 105 miles per hour. And it gets there pretty quickly, man. This thing rips. I'm telling you, this thing is even fun on the highway. It's smooth on the highway. Good passing power. As far as fuel efficiency, I've averaged 41.6 miles per gallon average and I use 93 octane gas. My best tank was 49.8 miles per gallon. So basically I'm averaging about 90 miles a tank and I have not done a single valve check or top end rebuild on this bike since I've owned it guys and I got close to 100 hours on this bike now mind you I've had this bike with multiple bikes for years so this was only a dessert bike this was never a main bike this is something that I took out maybe a couple times a week for maybe an hour or two hour stint of riding because I have to do frequent oil changes on this bike like at least at least every 12 to 15 hours on this bike you want to do an oil change but because it only holds 0.6 quart of oil very little oil so you want to keep that oil fresh in this bike and Yamaha dirt bike engines are known for their valves not moving and lasting a long time that was the biggest reason why I got this bike to do a supermodal build and I'll tell you guys this bike runs better than it did brand new and it starts up lightning fast but I will have a valve check and top end build done anyways when it hits about 150 hours and I'll let you guys know I'll probably do a full video on it Okay, now for the mods I did to this bike. And I have a link to all the parts, by the way, over my website at cyclecruiser.com. Click on the menu tab, Supermodal Build. The very first mod I did right out of the gate was put on an OEM fan kit, but it has never worked. They did issue a recall on it back in 2019, but I never got it done. I need to get that done, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because some people were complaining that when the fan kicks on, it's draining the stock battery, which is another issue with this bike is the alternator will not support an aftermarket light it won't even support the fan which I don't know if they issued a recall on that or not but when I first put this bike on the street I did have an issue with it overheating uh, what I did is put on a Tusk high pressure radiator cap 1.6 rating and changed over to the engine ice coolant I haven't had a problem since um, and I did upgrade the battery by the way to an anti-gravity restart lithium battery that's 7 amp hours and it has the restart technology which helped me when I got stranded because when I first put this bike on the street I turned the headlight on and it drained the battery and left me stranded uh, but the cool thing about the battery is it, it when it dies 
it leaves enough power in the battery where you press a button on top of the battery and it gives it enough juice that you can restart the bike, which that really helped me and kept me from being stranded. Um, also, I put on the FMF 4.1 RCT titanium exhaust, which saves one pound, and I did put the spark arrestor in it as well. Um, I did put on the Tusk Dual Sport Lighting Kit to make this bike street legal. And after about a year and a half, I had problems. The horn will not work for whatever reason. I checked the, the fuse is fine. I've tested the horn is fine. But I don't know if there's a short in the wiring or something. But it won't work completely anymore. And also, the turn signals won't work sometimes. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'll have to go through the wiring and check that out. And I'll give a future update on that. Um... I did a Trail Tech Vapor speedometer computer on this bike, and I made a special custom bracket for it. Um, the RPM gauge did not work well on that speedometer, but some people were telling me you had to splice into the stock wiring, which I wasn't willing to do, and I could care less about an RPM gauge. I needed a battery gauge, so I switched over to the Trail Tech Striker speedometer computer that has the battery gauge on there so that way when I turn the light on I can see how much of the battery power is being used or whatnot um, but I don't ride at night anymore I only ride during the day so I don't turn the light on but in the future hopefully I can get that corrected some people will say you can upgrade to the WR 450F's uh, magne stronger magneto or something for on the alternator which I did buy the parts for that but I have yet to install it on the bike I'll give a future update on that in the future but I just don't ride at night anymore with this bike if I can help it um, I did put on Zeta handguards with the integrated turn signals and handguard mirrors um, and they work great. I had them on my WR250R as well. But on the throttle side, uh, it does come loose. But I do plan on making a, uh, getting a bracket or whatever for that. That'll keep that from happening in the future. But I do, I'm do. i a hooligan on this bike. I'm busting wheelies, riding up staircases and everything else. So that's, you know, you have to, you have to keep those bolts tightened. Um, now, I did put on Warp 9 17-inch Supermoto wheels, the blue rims with the black spokes and blue hubs, and I did get the Cush Drive, which you want for the street that keep it smooth, and I put on the 85-degree angle valve stems, and I did do the DIY tubeless uh, for the wheels, which I have Shinko 705 ADV dual sport tires that I made tubeless. I did do a DIY video on that. And I did videos on all these mods, by the way. So you go check my Supermoto list or whatever. I'll include the, the Supermoto uh, playlist in this video. Um, but I all I did is I used the 3M marine sealant and the 3M sealing tape. And I'll tell you... Air stays in these tires better than any street bike I've ever had, guys. <laughs> it's amazing, man. That's an excellent mod to do. And it saves weight, and you don't have to deal with tubes. I hate tubes, man. But the Warp 9 Supermoto wheels, they come with a 320mm front rotor and the brake adapter. It comes with your choice of size for the rear sprocket. Um, and I went with the 44 tooth. I have the 13th stock counter sprocket and the 44 tooth teeth rear sprocket and I tell you that's the perfect combination the Shinko 705 ADV dual sport tires I got those because uh, because they're excellent on street and yet you can take it off road it has the uh, rubber compound that resists tearing and I tell you guys these tires last forever I have yet to change these tires guy and it's still got they still got some excellent tread on them man um, but they're not that great off road I have never got stuck in the mud or anything with them, so it gets me off-road, gets me by, but it's really not that fun riding with this bike off-road, which I've, you know, rode on my trails on my property that has leaves and pine straw and stuff, and it's sliding all over the place, but hey, it gets me off-road, so that's what I like about it, and they're they're almost bulletproof, man, I've never had any punctures, I ride up staircases, they, they could take a beating, and those Warp 9 Supermoto wheels are awesome, by the way. I have zero issues, man. They look awesome. They perform awesome. Also, I have a 112-link gold chain that I switched over to. I had plans on using this uh, bike for a dirt bike and a Supermoto and switch back between you know sprockets and chains. But I'm not going through that hassle, man. It's too much of a hassle. I'd rather just have a dirt bike and then have a, a Supermoto. So this is a dedicated Supermoto but that 112 link gold chain is awesome. I, I've only I think adjusted the chain one time since I've had this bike, man. I'm telling you, this bike is amazing. I put on a seat concept seat, 
uh, which is really awesome, man. I'll tell you guys, sitting on the, the stock seat is like sitting on wood. Um, definitely upgrade the seat. It's quite expensive, but it's worth it. I'll tell you, you can ride all day with this seat. Um, and I did change over to the black front pad to make it look more cooler and uniform, by the way. Uh, also, I made a custom bar pad. I took the, I, I bought another stock uh, Yamaha bar pad and I customized it so it fits over the speedo bracket. So, and also I put, uh, I put Velcro, you know, I put the really strong industrial Velcro on top of the bar pad and on the back of my phone cover so that I, I put my phone on the bar pad and it has held it. You see, I do wheelies right up staircase and everything else and my phone has never come off. It's been awesome, man. I did put on a Cherubis blue plastics for the number plates and the fork guards. As far as the fender, I initially cut the OEM fender, but it looked terrible and it threw mud up on my helmet and stuff. So I went ahead and put on a YZ85 front fender, which I did have to customize that in order uh, to get that on the bike, but it worked out perfect. Also, I put on a Krieger tail pack, which is really awesome and holds a lot of stuff. I did that actually to cover the fender bolts for the dual sport lighting kit. Finally, I did put on a GoPro uh, camera mount on there, which I have a link to in the description and comment section of this video. As far as my list of cons, I already mentioned most of them already. Uh, the only other con is that the 17 inch wheels are not good at going over logs. Don't expect to have a supermoto and think you're going to be like a dirt bike and be riding over logs and stuff. It ain't going to happen, man. <laughs> you have to ride a supermoto differently. And I learned the hard way because I actually, there was a hidden log once and the wheel jumped up violently and threw me off the bike, man. I broke my collarbone. So since then, I stay seated on the bike and I use my feet to help guide me over any logs and stuff. And that's how you have to ride with the Supermoto. You can't you can't stand up on your pigs like you do with dual sports and dirt bikes. You have to ride a Supermoto differently, which most people don't ride off-road that much with a Supermoto anyhow. I do. Uh, but I, like I said, I only do probably 5% off-road. It's mostly uh, street most of the time. Another con is, is this bike has made me a bona fide hooligan, man. I'm, I'm busting wheelies. I'm riding up staircases. I'm uh, man, riding back of buildings and just and riding in people's woods and stuff, which I don't do anymore. I got my own woods now, my property down here in Georgia. Uh, but it has made me a hooligan, man, which I wasn't that bad when I had my sport bikes and stuff because I never really wheelie much on those, man. But this this bike will make you wheelie, guys. It wheelies itself. <laughs> Another con is, is that it has a 30-day warranty with this bike, as most uh, dirt bikes do because it takes such a beating. Uh, the manufacturers don't won't give much longer than a 30-day warranty unless uh, it sometimes they're all for additional warranty coverage that you have to pay for but i did not but i'll tell you guys this bike has been absolutely solid reliable like i said i haven't done a valve check i haven't done a top and rebuild yet which i probably will in about 150 hours and i'll let you know what the results are at that time i highly recommend this bike guys but you need to know the cons and everything like i said i worked out most of them except for the headlight which i'm still trying to figure out so if you know how to fix that issue where the alternator can support the headlight properly on this bike let me know in the comments and leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this bike would you do a supermoto build to a, a dirt bike or do you just want to get the, the supermoto out of the box like a drz 400 or a ktm 690 etc but anyways leave a comment below let's talk about it like share subscribe i appreciate all you guys also make sure to check out my other channel bug out moto until next time i catch you guys later deuces thumbs up check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel bug out moto where i customize a van for my motorcycle so i can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere subscribe to my youtube channel bug out moto